Hi, my name is Alex Dolphin. Welcome back to another episode of Ex-Ante. Today we're going to discuss the case State v. Wilson. This case was heard in the Supreme Court of Connecticut in the year 1997. Let's go ahead and jump into the facts of the case. So Wilson killed a man with a revolver, shot him multiple times. But Wilson tried to get off by raising the insanity excuse or the insanity defense. Wilson became friends with someone in high school, and he also became acquainted with his friend's father. And these three began to know one another. Um, eventually, Wilson uh, believed that he was being controlled by these two. He believed that these two were exercising mind control techniques and were ruining his life by poisoning him, poisoning him with uh, methamphetamine and by hypnotizing him. He proceeded to report these two men to the police officers and said, hey, they're controlling my mind. They're hypnotizing me. You need to do something about these guys. And the police officers said, you know, sorry, there's not really much we can do. And so Wilson said, well, then I'm going to take this into my own hands. And he went to the father's house and he shot him with a revolver multiple times. He proceeded to turn himself into the police station, said, hey, I did it. I killed him. Uh, I killed this evil man. And so he's on trial for murder. Um, Wilson is trying to say he's not guilty by reason of insanity. And the reason that he's offering is that he didn't really understand what was going on. Um, he didn't really understand that these people you know, maybe weren't trying to hypnotize him. He was under a mistaken but honest subjective belief that these people were hypnotizing him and trying to ruin his life. Uh, he referred to these people as the Charles Manson, the Jim Jones, the Sirhan Sirhan, um, the mass and evil hypnotizers and mind controllers. And he said, these people were trying to control my mind and they were exercising an evil influence on society. And so I took it into my own hands and killed them. And the main thing that he protests on his appeal is the jury instructions, which makes sense. Um, he challenges that there was you know, too much of a, an emphasis in the jury instruction on an objective uh, understanding of morality rather than the subjective understanding of morality. The state is arguing that you know, morality, if we're going to include it in the jury instruction, should be defined at an objective societal level. Um, whereas the plaintiff is arguing it should be defined as the uh, you know, subjective understanding of morality uh, in the defendant's situation. Um, the Connecticut statute essentially is straight out of the model penal code. And the, the statute basically says if the defendant lacks the substantial capacity to appreciate the wrongfulness um, of, their, uh, of their actions, then they can be excused. Uh, <clears throat> So the court says, well, what are we going to do? An objective standard of morality, a subjective standard of morality. And they ultimately say, well, we're going to kind of do a hybrid. And so let me read that standard out of the case. It says, if a mental disease or defect causes the defendant to harbor a distorted perception of reality and to believe that under the circumstances as he honestly perceives them, his actions do not offend societal morality, even though he might be aware that society on the basis of the criminal code does not condone his actions. So that's the ruling from, from the court here. Uh, that's the key thing to, to grab out of this case is that a defendant can raise the insanity defense if he didn't understand at the time that his actions would have been condemned by society in a, in a moral fashion. Um, even if the defendant knows that their actions are strictly against the law, if they believe that society wouldn't have condemned them morally, then the defendant can raise this insanity defense. Um, and that's the holding of the court. I think we can begin to see pretty easily why this might be a very slippery slope. Um, and to just elaborate on why it might be such a slippery slope, I'll, I'll give an example. Um, imagine that there is a man who lives in Utah and he's fed up with Mormons. He, he you know, thinks that Mormons are trying to control his mind. He says, these people are sending missionaries to my door every day. They're giving me books. Um, they're all in the news, they control the legislature, and they're trying to control us non-Mormons, and they're trying to hypnotize us and, and ruin our lives because we're not Mormons. And so he holds this honest but mistaken belief that Mormons are evil, and they are wrong for society. Um, the Mormon religion is evil and bad for society. That's the belief that he holds. And he believes that, you know, this religion is causing mass evil on a global scale. This religion is ruining the world altogether. And he thinks that, you know, if if society has this conception of morality, well, society wouldn't condemn him 
um, for killing the leader of the Mormon church because they are evil. And society knows that the Mormons are evil. It's just this little bubble in Utah. And so he proceeds to kill the leader of the Mormon church. Well, um, if this man did this, it seems like under the model penal code, he would be able to raise the insanity defense, right? Because his mental conditions, he had an honest but mistaken belief, uh, maybe mistaken, I don't know. He had an honest but mistaken belief um, that Mormons were evil and trying to ruin the world. Um, and he felt that, you know, the rest of society outside of the Mormon religion would not have condemned his actions because these evil Mormons were ruining the world. And so killing the leader of the Mormon church actually was, you know, wouldn't have been condemned by society. And that was his fundamental misunderstanding uh, of society's morality, his subjective fundamental misunderstanding of society's morality. You know, and even though he knows that it's criminally against the law to kill this person, he says, well, you know, society wouldn't have condemned this action because it's actually moral because I'm stopping more evil from happening in society. Well, underneath Connecticut's interpretation of the model penal code's insanity defense, he certainly would be able to raise that defense. Um, and I think that has been why there's been such a, a backlash against the model penal code um, is that it does open the door for more and more people to raise the insanity defense. Um, and it could perhaps lead to a slippery slope where too many people um, are raising it. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And I hope you have a nice rest of your day. Bye-bye.